That is Ratko Mladic now. That is him today. Photographs held up by the prosecution. There he is, bald-headed, slightly bearded, rough stubble. Look at it. A cascade of present images of the most wanted man in Europe being transmitted right now from Belgrade. There he is in cap captivity. And there, with his back to us, hustled, not particularly not particularly pushed, but there he is in a baseball cap. You can see him looking like an engine driver. Uh, he, he's there in the back of the frame. Apparently he's had a stroke. He's, one of his arms is apparently no longer functioning. Uh, he's sort of shuffling with his back to us. There he is. The guards being reasonably circumspect. Uh, this is what is so fascinating, the extent to which Serbian society has been able to bring this man to justice. Well, now, among Ratko Mladic's crimes, the method methodological slaughter of 8,000 Muslim men and boys and the siege of Sarajevo, which inflicted such suffering on its people. This report now from our chief correspondent, Alex Thompson, who met General Mladic back in September 1995. And be warned, it does contain some extremely distressing images. The war crimes indictment is long, it is detailed, but it boils down to two notorious records. The General Ratko Mladic was military commander during the siege of Sarajevo, the longest siege of a capital city in the history of modern warfare. And the General Ratko Mladic was military commander during the massacre at Srebrenica, the biggest mass murder of civilians in Europe since the Second World War. He stands accused of genocide for both. From April 1992, for three years and seven months, Bosnian Serb forces lay siege to Sarajevo with everything they had, from heavy artillery to snipers' rifles. They had 18,000 men surrounding the place, and they pulverized it month in, month out. What follows are graphic, bloody images, but only a part of what could be shown. The targets were routinely civilians. In one incident, more than 20 people were killed and scores injured as they queued for bread in the city. About 10,000 people were killed overall, five times that number were injured. And already two officers under General Mladic are serving long prison sentences for war crimes connected to the bombardment. He was one of the most unpleasant people I had to deal with year on, year on. Racist, uh, violent, uh, sometimes charming, intelligent, but a brutal general. Then came Srebrenica. In April 1993, the UN ordered that Bosnian Muslims in the town be protected. But Bosnian Serbs needed it to forge their mini-state. Another siege began. 400 Dutch UN soldiers were stationed here to protect the population, by now overcrowded, hungry and terrified. And after two years of siege, the Bosnian Serbs, under the command of General Mladic, moved in. Women and children were bussed out of town, and on the morning of July the 12th, 1995, it began, away from cameras. The UN soldiers did not, could not stop it. By the time they were done, the Bosnian Serbs had killed more than 8,000 men and teenage boys. Later that summer, in conditions of great secrecy, I met and interviewed General Mladic. He was unapologetic for either Srebrenica or Sarajevo. What we're going to do is just do an interview and we will just run that interview simply so it's your chance to explain your side of the story. Already on the run for Sarajevo, he would soon be indicted for Srebrenica after that interview and disappeared altogether. On camera and off it, he was already a fugitive, his behaviour by turns threatening or simply bizarre. Uh, well, I need to tell you that the stills that we've just shown you uh, on the screen were mock mocked up by Serbian television. So just shows you, doesn't it? But the actual picture of him moving, they were real, and we'll show you them again in a moment. But Alex uh, Thompson is with me now. Alex, um, there you were. You met him. 
bulky, stocky, what sort of height? Tell me, what was, what was he like? Well, it was, uh, he's a small man, but a wide man, and bullish by stature, bullish by demeanour, completely unapologetic. The Bosnian Serbs were absolutely the victims in all this. They were the victims of the, of the Croats, they were victims of the Bosnian Muslims, of any other ethnic grouping. Rather what you'd expect, I, I, I think. And, uh, and he said that he would defend to the hilt his right to defend his people and fight for his people. That was it. Um, drinking heavily at the time, certainly, but, um, yeah, it's a, a very confident performance, very different from the But the I gather after the interview, he um, hugged you. Um, and, and, and a small feat for a man who was rather smaller than you. Well, it was strange. I mean, it was, it, there were several hugs, I have to say. I mean, I don't want to make too big a thing about this, but he did bear hug me several times, and for several seconds, his head was buried in my chest, as it were, and he kept talking about how he wanted to meet me again, how he must go hunting again. It was an extraordinarily over-effusive performance after someone who had just defended some of the alleged worst atrocities that Europe's seen since Hitler. Mm. Well, now, um, we have not yet seen close-up pictures of him. The pictures we showed were mocked up by Serbian television from somebody else's account. Let's take a look now at uh, that actual moment when uh, uh, he was uh, pushed through into the cell. Let's have a look at him. There he goes. Yep. Now, what, 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 what do you... I mean, we well, can only see the back of him, so it's well, very difficult. About, what we're getting from the prosecutor's office is, is, is small but specific. Uh, one, no evidence of plastic surgery. Um, two, no apparent evidence of, of, of a stroke. Um, it was mentioned that he might have suffered a stroke. Uh, the prosecutor's office certainly are denying that. He's the one in the baseball cap on the right there. Um, and, but certainly you can see from that shuffling demeanour, 16 years on the run have taken their toll.